good afternoon. Um, yep, my name is Tom Ferry, and uh, I am a Sandy Hook pilot. I come from a, a family, a long line of Sandy Hook pilots here in New York, going back many generations. And in 2001, I was an apprentice harbor pilot, and um, I happened to find myself at about 11 o'clock in the morning answering that call of all available boats. I was uh, in command of the Pilot Boat America, a 53-foot fast pilot launch. And I had just come in from about 20 miles south of here out at sea, where we board and disembark ships entering and leaving the port of New York. Uh, my father was on the boat with me. He was a pilot at the time. He's since retired. He happened to be working that day. And um, the two of us brought the boat up from sea toward uh, lower Manhattan, and I can remember very clearly coming north up the upper bay of Manhattan past the Verrazano Bridge, staring at downtown Manhattan, which was completely engulfed in a cloud of dust and smoke after both towers had fallen. And that smoke rose up as high as you could see and drifted south across the East River and over Brooklyn. I didn't know where I was go what I was going to be doing. I was just told to go that way. And I wasn't a policeman or a fireman or a soldier or something. I was an apprentice pilot learning how to navigate ships. But I found myself steering this boat toward downtown Manhattan. And as I got closer, I found uh, that there would be thousands and thousands and thousands of people standing along the very same seawall that you uh, just so amazingly spoke about. Um, jumping over and into the Hudson River. Um, I brought my boat. I, I just heard this story for the first time myself. So I brought my boat. Uh, I brought the bow of my boat against that seawall right at North Cove Marina, the same exact place you're talking about. And um, and before I could think much of it, people just began to jump onto it. <laughs> and this boat, which um, normally carries between eight and twelve people suddenly had 50, 60 people just piling onto it, and we had to tell them stop and back away. And, um, and, uh, and it was something like one of these boats you see full of migrants or, or um, you know, refugees or something coming across. And you know, people were just covered in dust and gray from top to bottom, and some with no shoes on, some were injured. Some were screaming, some were crying, some were just stone cold in shock. Um, we didn't ask anybody where they would like to go or what stop they'd like to get off at. We just turned the boat around, went straight across the Hudson River, and dropped them off in, in Jersey, at, in Jersey City. Um, we turned around and came back and got more. And we did this for hours. Uh, time seems to... Um, evaporate at that time. And also, you don't know what's going to happen next, um, because it was really the first time in my life, I think, that uh, I, didn't, I, I hadn't planned any of this. You know, I didn't wake up in the morning and plan my day this way. It was reactionary. Everything was reactionary that day. And so, and also, it was so unfathomable, unfathomable that you, you didn't, everything was, was a shock. And so as we approached the seawall after five or six of these trips across the river and saw a group of firefighters standing um, against the seawall, kind of consoling one another, um, we at that time received a call on the radio from our pilot boat, which was still out at sea, where my cousin Neil was uh, still waiting out there. And he was calling to ask if we would look out for his brother, his brother Paul, who was a firefighter here in New York. So I saw these firefighters, and I just said, hey, guys, we're looking for somebody. Uh, do you know him by any chance, you know, Paul Keating? And they said, what do you mean? I said, hey, he's a firefighter from Ladder 5 in Greenwich Village. And this guy just looked at me, and he goes, they're all gone. They're all gone. And I said, what do you mean? And, like, they've gone home. <laughs> and he says, no, pretty much everyone's gone. He just said like that. You know, and it was, remember, it was the first time... I was kind of fathoming that really it was that magnitude. Um, well, we continued on for most of the day, bringing people across until there was not really as many people to bring. 
And then we put the boat ashore, and we, we went ashore and came across the West Side Highway. We walked up and under the overpasses there, and, and for the first time, sometime that evening of Tuesday the 11th, saw the, the actual um, pile of what was the World Trade Center. And we began to walk up to groups of firefighters who were standing in, in, in these, you know, command centers, these makeshift command centers, and saying, what do you need? You know, what do you guys need? What can we, what can we do for you? And, you know, I was in like a t-shirt and jeans and Converse All-Stars, and these guys are professional rescue workers, and they're like, what can you do for me, you know? And, um, but then they started to realize that they did need things. They, they, had, they, they had very limited resources at that time. They needed boots. Their boots were melting off their feet. They needed batteries for flashlights as night came and there was not much electricity and they hadn't set up generators yet. They needed fuel for their generators. They needed food for the dogs that were in the rescue work. They needed saline solution for their eyes which were burning because of the smoke that would get into your eyes and the dust. They needed ice. They <coughs> needed water. These are all things that they needed and didn't have. And we started, not just me and my little 53-foot boat, when I say we, I mean the entire maritime community, many of which had put their boats to the seawall, began to take our boats and go back to New Jersey and tell people who were just standing there, this is what they need. And as night became morning and morning became day of Wednesday and into Thursday, this stuff just came, flooded in, shoes, 18-wheeler tractor trailers would pull up, empty an entire shoe store of shoes, we'd put it on the boat, bring it over, set up a shoe store, and the firefighters would come down and drop their boots and take new ones. Um, we hotwired a golf cart at that marina, and we drove it further and further in, and we would <clears throat> go to different command centers and ask them, what do they need? And this went on for, for two and a half days or so. Um, at a certain point, sometime on Thursday, they sent me home. They, they said I, sh I should go home, and I went back on the boat, and they took me back to Staten Island, where I lived. And I remember being relieved and going south in the bay on the boat, looking back to the north and being really happy that I was going home. And uh, I, I got to my house and saw my mom for the first time since it had happened, and um, felt a sense of relief, and, and for the first time kind of fell apart, you know? and. Uh, um, I thought to myself, I never want to go back there again. Um, Friday morning, I woke up, and my friend who was with me all this time, uh, he, he called me up and said, come on, let's, we got to go back up. And we, we did. We got back on the boat, and we went back up Friday morning and, and continued to do, to do the same thing all day Friday until eventually it was time for them to say that it was time for us to go home. I did go home, and I didn't want to come back again for a long time. And uh, for many years, I didn't come back to this neighborhood. Um, but eventually, one of my colleagues told me that he was volunteering at Tribute Center and telling his story, and, and uh, someone who was with me those days, and um, said, yeah, come give it a try, you know? And so I started to do it, to volunteer and give the tours and tell my story. And it's, it's been a re remarkably rewarding experience. I get to pe meet people like them. And uh, like you said in the beginning, uh, we share a bond. We could be people who, who would normally probably not interact with one another in a day -to -day, on a day-to-day -day basis. But I've met a great group of people here who share a common bond. And it's been uh, my way of remembering. We say never forget, right? And uh, that's my way of not forgetting. So I thank you guys for coming here and, and paying tribute to this, uh, this place.